Now fast forward to Revelation chapter 21, verse 3 through 6. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with man. John 1, 14. And he dwell, will dwell with them. John 1, 14. And they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. Neither, uh, uh, listen, if, you, if you're ever discouraged, you, you need to, Revelation 21 verses 3 through 6 should be on your refrigerator or on your wall, okay, or on tap or even on, written on the tablets of your heart because God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, speaking of John, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And watch this. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He's the water. He's the water. He's the feast. He's the fulfillment of the feast. Okay. We've got about 10 minutes left. I know none of you are watching your watches. And if you are, we won't say anything. <laughs> God will forgive you. No. We got 10 more minutes, and I would be grossly remiss to not end with an eschatological timeline of how history and prophecy will end in the biblical timeline as we see ever so beautifully painted and portrayed and packaged here with these seven feasts. What I want to do is I want to take you from the next event on God's prophetic calendar all the way to the new heavens and the new earth and give you a timeline of sorts or a chart, if you will, so you can have a better understanding of how it's all going to play out, starting with the next event, the rapture of the church of Jesus Christ. That's the next event. The timing before the tribulation. I think we've argued that case uh, ad nauseum uh, over the past several weeks, but the rapture of the church has to take place before the seven-year tribulation. Now, what is the rapture? Well, by way of explanation, it's where born-again Christians who are waiting and watching will be taken up caught up, raptured up to meet Jesus Christ. He will take us as his bride to his father's house where he is even now preparing a place for us, a bridal chamber. And that was the Feast of Trumpets. What's the duration? The twinkling of an eye, not a blink. A twinkling of an eye has been likened unto a sparkle. It's an, almost an immeasurable, hey, it's going to be really fast. It's going to be really fast. All right. Now what happens after that? The next event is the first resurrection. I want to spend just a little bit of time on this real quickly. The timing. The first resurrection started when Jesus Christ was first resurrected on the first day of the week. The feast of first fruits. Okay. What is it? A bodily resurrection of those who died in Christ are caught up to meet together with us who are alive and remain at the rapture and are forever with the Lord. What's the duration of this event? Approximately 2,000 years. Now, let me explain because the bride is not the only one to take part in the first resurrection. One commentator put it this way. Jesus declared in John 5, 28 and 29 that there would be two categories of resurrection. A resurrection of life and a resurrection of death or condemnation. 
Those who are genuine believers will be part of the first resurrection and those that are lost will experience the second. It's important to understand that his focus was on the kind of resurrection, not the time of resurrection. Note the following. The Apostle Paul used a Greek term in relation to the stages of the first resurrection. The Greek word is tagma, uh, each in his own order, 1 Corinthians 15, 53, the first part. This is a military term frequently used to designate a division or a battalion of soldiers. Paul pictures a military battalion passing by a reviewing stand at different intervals of time and relates this to the first resurrection. So there are different stages or battalions, if you will, that come under the category of the first resurrection. It started again with Jesus Christ almost 2,000 years ago, uh, the first fruits of all who would follow. The second battalion, the second division, a token number of saints. Matthew 27, 51 through 53. You remember when he gave, gave up his spirit into, you know, and, and Christ died on the cross at the ninth hour, exactly at the time. And the curtain in the temple that separated the holy place from the most holy place was torn from top to bottom. We're told, Matthew records for us, that tombs were opened and there was a resurrection of a number of saints at that time. And that was really the second battalion. What's the third division or the third battalion? The rapture, the church, the bride, the Christians. Now there's a fourth battalion. The two witnesses who are martyred in Revelation 11, 1 through 14. There's a fifth battalion. The tribulation saints who are beheaded and martyred, having not accepted the mark of the Antichrist. The sixth battalion are the Old Testament saints, which we'll see in Daniel, or Daniel 12, 1 and 2, and Isaiah 26, 19. I have all the scripture references again on the handouts. Please, if you want to download them, this is a fascinating study. But you've got several divisions or battalions, all constituting the first resurrection over a period of time. Now please, 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 this is a bodily resurrection. The Apostle Paul by the Holy Spirit said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. What was he saying? Well, this is the best way I've ever been able to describe it or understand it. And this is how I explain it whenever I do a memorial service. When I did my daughter's memorial service, this is how I understood it. Okay. We are created in God's image, triune in nature. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We are body, soul, and spirit. Okay? When we die, our body goes into the ground, dust to dust from where it was created. Our spirit goes to be with the Lord, and we cease, because we're deceased, we cease to be a living soul. Okay? You have a light bulb, three parts. You've got the bulb, you got the electricity, and you got the light that is created when you bring the bulb and the electricity together. Now, when the bulb dies or is ceases, uh, what do you do with the bulb? You put it in the rubbish, it goes to the ground from where it was created, dust to dust. That's the body. Where does the electricity go? It goes back to its source. The electricity, like the spirit, goes back to and is present with the source. If we have the Holy Spirit in us, sealing us, that, that deposit, if you will, born again of the Holy Spirit, that's what Paul was saying, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord in spirit. Now, where's our soul? Well, we're not a living soul until when we who are alive and remain are caught up, given our new bodies. And the dead in Christ are resurrected first as part of the first resurrection. They're given their new bodies. And the spirit with their new body creates a living soul for all eternity. Now, I don't know about you, but I can't wait for my new body 
Because this one got miles on it, man. <laughs> it is like way out of warranty. And it is totaled. It is salvaged. And I want my new body. <laughs> okay? I mean, there are things that are hurting that I never even knew existed in my anatomy now. I get up in the morning and I make noises. I remember 